Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd down here at Advantage One RV today where we have a 278 DDS Gulfstream 6175 pounds. People always ask, what does the DDS stand for? Um, I, I don't believe in this case it stands for Doctor of Dental Surgery. Doctor of Dental Surgery or Science? It's Doctor of Dental Surgery, DDS, correct? Surgery? I don't know, I'll figure that out later on my own time. In the meantime, I believe this stands for Double Double Bunks because it has two big bunks and the S, I think, means slide, because she's got a big old super slide. Bath entry, full travel access. Doesn't look like it was used a whole heck of a lot. Pretty solid little, I think this is a great, like, entry-level rig. And since it's used, you're not paying the new RV price tag. <laughs> that ain't all bad. Quick courtesy note to our headphone listeners. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the CO detector in this thing. I've got plenty of power going to it. It's not low battery. There's no propane or anything running in here. The thing's chirping occasionally. It's ear piercingly loud. I'm standing here in person, but I know when you're wearing headphones or earphones, it's extremely rough. So you might want to turn the volume down proactively a little bit. And I can see a camper like this working for several different uh, kinds of people, individuals, groups, some very different kind of camping. I think the obvious thing here is that we, we've got a family camper with a big super slide and lots of seating. We've got lots of rainy day space. It's it's a simple but smart series trailer. It's what I call a smarter class kind of camper where, uh, you know, you're, you're not, it's not over to, oh man, that, that thing's about on my last nerve. Oh, I, I have no idea why it is chirping at me. Uh, like I said, plenty of power, not a propane leak. Must just be all the hot air I'm blowing in here. That's the only thing that I can figure out. Anyway, I will try not to make too much of a deal on that, but oh, it's just, it's the right tone. It just sets me right on edge. But the other thing I can think about here, the bunks are very minimal in terms of their impact on this floor plan. So if maybe you just have some occasional guests, but you don't want to dedicate a huge private, you know, 12 foot of your RV just to uh, a bunk space, this is minimizing that pretty well. I think that uh, this would be a good model too if you wanted to remove some bunks to create an office space. This would be a very good thing for something like that. Now I've noticed a couple little glitchy things here and there, nothing major. I, I noticed this piece of wall paneling was kind of popped out, but it's bone dry. I think that this is a result of heat expansion and contraction because there's no discoloration, there's no swelling, there's no mold spores. I don't believe that's a leak. I think it's just excess material that kind of bowed out. The only other thing I've noticed here is that both the lights in the top of the slide here are not doing stuff. I don't, I don't know. Maybe they just need a new bulb. Maybe there's a thing inside there, some kind of wiring issue. I don't know. I just know that they're not turning on. That's all I can tell you standing here right now. Now, remember, this is Advantage One RV, where we sell RVs on behalf of their owners on consignment. So it's not like, uh, you know, a normal used RV store where we could theoretically go through and have everything inspected ahead of time. Think of it kind of like real estate. The real estate broker does not go through and have every home they're selling inspected. I am at least making you aware of potential uh, defects or hiccups or something like that. Uh, that, that. You know that CO detector, it must have not appreciated me putting its name on blast because it has since quieted down, for which I am thankful. That is not a complaint, by the way. But what I was getting at is just, if I see something, I say something. And even if I don't have the answers, I at least want to put you on track of knowing like what's here, what's going on, so that you can decide like, okay, how far do we wanna pursue this? What is this worth to us, etc. cetera. Um, very simple entertainment center right here. If you wanted to put out a swing out TV, you could. Uh, uh, DVD uh, stereo down below that. If we notice that is a big trifold high to bed sleeper sofa. Plus this has a full on u dinette. So if you wanna turn this into just sleeper palooza, you got the double beds, or you got your front master bed, You've got the height of bed you've got the u dinette you've got the double bunks you could sleep what six to ten in here depending on how you stacked everybody up roughly i mean pretty sweet you see how you've got uh storage like that drawer below the dinette there opening that up giving you a look around all the storage space here um that is another thing this floor plan does very well i like that little you know put on your shoes boot bench right by the door too good drawer space and an impressive amount, I think, of cabinetry in the kitchen area. Where it gets a little interesting is over at the exchange uh, next to the, the bathroom space there. I think there's 
you could say that's a pantry. There's obviously like uh, something intended to be a uh, hanging closet or a broom closet next to that. It, it's a little shallow, but I think it could work. Um, and, it, you know, is that a closet? Is that or, uh, a dresser? Is that a pantry for the bunk space? I think it's going to change a little bit in how you divvy it up, how each person's going to camp. Something else, this is an interesting touch. This is a triple curtain bunk. I don't know that I've ever seen that before. And there's actually several things on these bunks that I like. I like how uh, you each person in the upper and lower bunk has their own level of privacy that they can kind of customize, which is cool. So the upper and lower beds are not fighting over that space. But the other thing I really liked on this is that there's just a, there's a light switch right here where mom and dad, grandpa and grandpa, whoever can reach, be like, all right. Lights out, kids. You don't have to climb up into that bunk to turn off the lights. That's a smart, smart feature right there. And if you're familiar with the RV industry, you'll recognize this floor plan. Jayco has done this for years. They call it a 287 BHS. And one of the signature calling cards on that Jayco, you actually see here this ginormous, like, you can clean your Labrador size shower over here. I like that this one was built an option though with the full shower surround paneling. Not all of these have that. Um, you can actually see some of them are built with just an off color wall panel, whereas this has the full surround paneling. So it's just one less thing you got to deal with. Like if it was just wall paneling, it's not a big deal. You just take your towel when you're done and you go like that and dry off the walls. But now you don't have to. It's a little simpler, a little easier. I'm going to slowly spin you around, hopefully not make you motion sick here. One of the other things I notice is things like remote controls for the stereo, original owner's manuals. I look for those kind of things. Those are indicators to me. People who keep track of those tend to be people who uh, keep their RV nicer overall. They don't tend to let stuff get beat up and worn out and lost, you know what I mean? Uh, the These two big windows, the panoramic windows and the slide, those open for airflow. The slide side windows do not, by the way. I just realized that I had that shade down. I didn't know if you necessarily noticed that. Interesting little thing here for the master bedroom. It does have a sliding privacy door, but you see there's the little kind of, you can feed some HDMI cables or something back through there so that if we sneak around the corner, these look like the take me to your leader uh, hangers right here. Don't those look like some kind of weird alien monolith things, not the drunken octopi that I normally uh, like to talk about. But you could feed some cables through this side, and it's just this nice, big, wide open wall. So if you want to put a pretty good sized screen here, you could, you just gotta make sure that that door's not gonna hit it. But man, I bet you could get something close to 40 inches up there. I mean, that's, that's just wide open right there. Now it says TV backer location over here on that wall. If you wanted to, you could do that too. It's a stick and tin trailer. You got studs roughly every 16 inches on center. I like that vent above the bed. It's not a power vent, but with that ceiling light right next to it, you can very easily piggyback some power off to that and upgrade this to a power vent fan. Give us a call if that's something you're interested in. We can hook you up with stuff like that. Now, this is a half and half kind of bedroom. That is a very CPAP friendly side stand on uh, that side of the Camp Queen over here. Whereas over here, we have a taller, longer full length hanging closet. So if you're claustrophobic or if you're looking for tall stuff, you can do a little bit of each here. You just don't do either on both sides. This floor plan is also very road mode friendly. With that big super slide closed, the way that this one lays out, uh, the, you, can, you can just snake right around the kitchen countertop here. You can get yourself back into the kitchen area if you need to. You can get to the bunks. You can get to the bathroom. Uh, frankly, you can get to just about anything and everything, and you can do it from either door. So this one is front to back, inside and out, travel friendly for road mode. Outside looking pretty darn good. And I tell you, like, it's got some dark navy kind of color accents, but for the most part, it's like a white and graphite exterior. You got a, uh, a white, silver, black, maybe a deep blue truck, it would look, ooh, this would look good behind that. Nice large front pass-through compartment right there. You see a couple leveling blocks and stuff, compliments of the previous owners. Kind of indicates to me they either, I got a feeling they're just done camping. Like, it, it doesn't look like they camped a lot. Maybe they found out that they weren't using it as much as they thought they were going to. I'm playing catch up after a few days out of the office, so I don't have all the details on that like I normally would, but Doing some RV CSI, it sure don't look like they used it a lot, and obviously the fact that it's here says they don't plan to do that anytime soon either. Now, she doesn't have a ladder on the back, but this is a fully walkable roof structure. One of the other things that is kind of nice about this one is below those bunks, 
It is just basically wide open storage with just the exception of where the water heater is located over here on the right hand side. They've kind of partitioned that off. So if you were looking for an RV that you wanted to modify into an office by taking out some bunks, I think this would be a good candidate. Uh, first of all, because you know it is wide open down there, but secondly, because it is in the used RV price range, you're not significantly devaluing a brand new RV. And who knows, if you do it nicely, you might not be devaluing the RV at all, but that requires a little bit of DIY skill, more than I have, so to speak. Like, I'm good with a stapler and a keyboard and a mouse, not so much a hammer and nails. <laughs> And one of the things I noticed on here, that bathroom entry door, it can fully open without uh, conflicting with the awning, which I think is a really good thing because if you have that awning arm out and one of the kids wasn't paying attention and they just flip that door open and smash in the side of the awning arm, that's a very quick way to ruin an awning arm. They're very good at handling stress and weight and like rain from the top down, but not side to side. They're not made for side to side stress. So the fact that the kid can't just kick the door open like Dog the Bounty Hunter going, Bah! you know, and bear mason some guy to death. That's a, uh, that's a good thing right there. Any Dog the Bounty Hunter fans out there have any clue what I'm yammering on about right now? I, I have a weird sense of humor and some odd references. Apologies. By the way, if you're weirded out by the fact that like, eh, I feel like someone's gonna wa you know, see me sitting there using the toilet. Not for nothing, but that's not for me, you know? Well, I, I respect that. And good news is nobody will because you can deadbolt the door. Now the RV's pretty late model, so the tires certainly have not had a chance to age out. And it does not appear that they have weathered out or been like overloaded. There's no signs of like overloaded axles or uh, improper tire wear and tear. Looks pretty good. So give us a call down here at Advantage One RV if this looks like the right one for you. Or if you spotted something else in the background, you want some info on that, I'll leave you a link. Uh, anything I missed, any questions you have, drop me uh, a little comment there or hit the like button if you like what we do here. If you haven't done so already, please take a second to subscribe and follow along. Join in on our family owned and operated fun facility that we have here. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day everyone.